So I'm Lauren. Um, thanks everyone for having me here today. It's a really big honor to be uh, at this conference and talking around people who are really industry leaders in this area. So I haven't committed my speech to memory, so just bear with me as I read my notes. Um, today I'm presenting a very short summary of my honors research that I've just finished. So I'm currently doing my master's degree in information systems um, here at Vic, and I also work with a great group of people at PwC and the cyber team. Uh, just in advance, I apologize for the use of the word cyber, especially given um, the, the previous talk, but I, I do agree with that talk as well, so. Yeah, so I'm at PwC as a graduate security analyst now, and I've been there since the start of the year. So thankfully, the phenomena that I set out to prove in my research actually exists, or at least, albeit with the small sample that I took. So I'll be taking my findings to a larger scale over summer for completion of my master's degree. Yeah, so I apologize for the use of the word cyber. My research has a few purposes. So the overarching purpose being to prove what I was observing was actually taking place. So I've noticed people, and you guys probably have as well, typically non-security specialists or non-techies in general, like in a broader sense, they tend to hold some really specific thoughts and opinions of who or what a hacker might be. Um, I cringe at the use of the word hacker, so I didn't attempt to define the word, but I just let it be. So. I feel like pop culture, news media, and generally speaking, the sensitive nature of security are all factors I assume would contribute to this perception. So a way that I like to explain this, explain this in short to people is by asking them a simple question. So, oh, sorry, oh my goodness. Um, sorry, just bear with me. Okay, so by asking a simple question, so how do you picture, what do you picture when, you might, when someone says hacker? Generally, this explains the existence of the phenomena that I set out to prove. But if I were to ask this audience right here, I'd probably get a totally different response, or at least I hope I'd get a really different response. So nonetheless, if you picture a teenager in a dark room, awake all night, hacking, whatever that might be, then you're not alone. So my research sample thinks the same with some interesting findings. So to investigate this phenomena, I crafted two research questions as a starting point. What stereotypes, if any, <coughs> does the general public associate with terms including hacker, hacking cybercrime or computer, computer hacker? And what are the characteristics of these perceptions? So beyond this, what are the social, governmental, and business implications for how these perceived hackers are portrayed in public discourse? So the problems caused by these perceptions developed as I conducted the research. Yes, it's bad that people assume hackers to fit a certain mold, but what's worse than this is the disconnect and lack of fear or awareness that a lot of people have. This reflects in their own security behaviors. The lack of awareness was extremely apparent, and what's worse is the accompanied lack of care. So to quote one of my interviewees, my EFOS pin is the same as my phone pin, haha, <laughs> I should probably change that. Which, yeah, you can make of that what you will. <laughs> so then I wondered what are the implications of this, beside really poor security? What does this mean for wider society, let alone the security industry? But also, like, why have I opened this can of worms? So, like most research, I spend a lot of my time performing my literature review. And at the start of my university career, I never imagined I'd have to analyze Angelina Jolie's 90s classic hackers, but here we are. And as expected, it didn't help me to define hacking, but it did act as an integral influencer to society's perceptions of hacking. So I went about proving this problem through qualitative assessment of my findings, which were gathered through a series of 10 interviews of 10 people, all confidential in nature. These 10 people were intended to represent society, and to address the elephant in the room, I realized that 10 is a really small sample to conduct from, but I wanted to use qualitative methods, at least to begin with, so I could gather data that I couldn't really measure with numbers. Um, however, I plan to move to a quantitative for my next stage, so I can like really have a, a broader scale for my research. So the individuals who participated were from a range of professions, some of which include a hairdresser, a wine grower, an electrician, carpenters, and importantly, one security professional, and other professions, including some students. So 19 questions were developed, and of these questions were five topics, in including attitudes towards hacking, personal security behaviors, hacktivism, piracy, and legal matters. So now to get to the surprising and the unsurprising findings, starting with awareness. So important to note here is the asterisk, which means that whatever is stated is excluding the security specialist who I interviewed. <laughs> Thank God. So. He essentially ended up being uh, a control of sorts, so that was good. 
So all interviewees, excluding the specialist, expressed confusion towards the topic of cybercrime. A lot of ums and ahs were said, as well as a lot of I don't knows, relating to all five question topic areas. Again, none of the interviewees, apart from the security specialist, knew what a cert was or what the function may include. People did make some reasonable assumptions though, including cert being a fire brigade for computers. And just important to note here, when I was assessing cert, I wasn't assessing cert NZ specifically, but rather cert as a, I guess, global industrial construct. So the next section being technical understanding. Nine out of 10 interviewees were accepting or not concerned about piracy, despite admitting to partaking in it. And while I hold no, no opinion about piracy, I found it alarming that none of these individuals had heard of VPN. So it appeared that a, a major disconnect existed with individual understandings of cybercrime and the lack of security measures that people had in place. So people were aware that cybercrime is a problem, but don't seem to really relate it to their lives. It's like a distant message that they just don't act upon, apart from the security specialist. Possibly the most important topic was influence, which drew forth some alarming but not really surprising results. So seven out of 10 individuals solely referenced external means for their reasoning, such as online sources and news media, and only three drew from internal reasoning, such as comparison to other crimes or experience, be it personal or otherwise. So of the sample of 10, nine people voiced confusion, frustration, or general concern for the poor media portrayal of cybersecurity related events. So I'd say cybersecurity really broadly because to some people uh, that means crim.com, but to some people it means like completely different things altogether. But I deliberately didn't want to define that sort of realm. So I found it really concerning, which raises another problem, that people are consuming media from sources they consider unreliable, but they're not really bothering to get to the truth. So I don't know about you guys, but I find that quite worrisome. So I found some unexpected findings about perceived characteristics of hackers. I'm sorry for the boring table, but I think it's pretty good. So six people feel that hackers are logical, technically smart, or something along the lines of intelligent. This was an expected finding as per the previous literature that I'd assessed. So an odd generalization or assumption appeared. So <laughs> hear me out, and it's not targeted at anyone. So four out of 10 individuals mentioned <laughs> participation in World of Warcraft to be an attribute of a hacker. Make of it what you will, and I didn't remotely prompt people to mention World of Warcraft, it was rather from participant made comments alone. So I figured this might be a reference to like gaming and gaming culture in general, and this was just how people kind of explained it, because it might have stood out as like a prolific example. But nonetheless, it formed a notable trend. So general nerdiness was mentioned as well as being awake all night. Uh, I feel like my participants might know some pretty committed gamers, or what they deem to possibly be hackers. So another boring table, I'm sorry. But I also measured the frequency and nature of standout cyber-related events that participants mentioned. So broadly in the realm of cyber, so the Kim.com saga was mentioned by nine out of 10 interviewees. And I'll get to why shortly, but you can probably imagine why. So WannaCry was mentioned either directly or indirectly three times, as was Snowed Edward, or should I say Edward Snowden, <laughs> um, <laughs> and the American elections mentioned in a very broad sense. So important to note here, there were more characteristics that were mentioned, but I'm just including the ones that had really high frequencies. So people reiterated across the interviews their confusion about these, about these and other events. So two admitted they tried to follow news headlines about these particular incidents, but found it too difficult to follow, and otherwise didn't know really like where to find out more. So the quotes, the quotes on screen demonstrate this, but there are certainly more throughout my transcripts of the similar sorts of comments alluding to the same thing. Right, so too long didn't read, or what academics refer to as a conclusion. What does this all mean? So a high level of participation, oh sorry, a high level of intelligence, participation in WoW, and general nerdiness are characteristics of a hacker, at least from the sample that I gathered. It seems a few of my friends might be hackers after all, based on this logic. Furthermore, the Kim.com saga, for which I hold a neutral stance, was a standout event related to uh, cyber matters, generally at least to non-specialists. So most importantly, and unexpectedly, interviewees were mostly dissatisfied with media reporting on the topic of Kim.com and wider security, security and cybercrime related events. So what do these mean for the wider cybersecurity industry? I can assume from my findings that, that, sorry, that the perceptions were taken generally. They may cause social, governmental, and business implications, 
whether we realize it or not. Importantly, I think my findings are significant to policy development going forward in IT and security areas, because individuals and organizations may act according to their perceptions, or at least their preconceived ideas, or lack of care and awareness. So, <laughs> distrust for news media has major repercussions. What sources will people turn to if they don't know who to trust? And of course, security behaviors. So if people think that hackers are just role players who have too much time, they may be a little bit less inclined to improve their security practices. And this definitely relates to an organizational level as well. So just because a crime may be less tangible than a physical crime, it doesn't really make it any less damaging. And hopefully we're all aware of that. So that pretty much wraps up my talk. And thank you all for listening to my first ever talk. So <laughs> if you want to find out more, I definitely want to hear people's critiques, uh, constructive criticisms, and this sort of thing along these lines. So hit me up at my Twitter or talk to me after this. <laughs>